My name is Alex Vaughn, and I'm Chief Science Officer at Pymetrics, where we focus on de deploying fair and equitable solutions in the hiring space. And I'm here to talk to you about some of the lessons we've learned at, at Pymetrics about deploying AI in a regulated lens. So the problem Pymetrics focuses on is how do we find the right person for the right job? And everybody who goes through hiring has to solve this problem, and there is a variety of ways to solve it, but most of them are pretty poor. So just to give one example, to call out a major tech firm that posted an ad recently, they, they tried to define the core feature of the job, and they really wanted somebody who was excellent at a skill called Kubernetes administration. So they asked for 12 years of experience in this skill. But they were asking for expertise that doesn't exist because this technology is only six years old. And this sort of thing, you know, seems like a typo or a one-off, but is actually pretty pervasive in the hiring world. Oftentimes, the things that you try to get when you, when you look for the right person for the right job are impossible or impossible to define. And at Pymetrics, we're trying to solve that problem at scale using a data-driven approach. So like many folks in the analytics business, we're using a data-driven, machine learning-driven approach to, to hiring that I'll tell you about as I go through this talk. But I just wanna unpack kind of the three main pieces that go into any AI or any analytic solution. The first thing you need, of course, is data. And you need data, it has to be high quality, it has to be at scale. And we have our own data pipeline that we use extensively. The second thing you need is machine learning. You need some sort of algorithm at the core of your company that makes decisions in a way that supports your business value. And the third thing you need is some way of measuring and demonstrating that business value so that you can capture clients and capture and provide value to those clients. And Pymetrics has done all of three of these in a really unique way. So the first thing Pymetrics did is we came at the problem of hiring. How do you find the right person for the right job from a way that's really different than a lot of other folks have? Instead of looking at resumes or some sort of you know, skills test, we, we took the hypothesis that many people could be a good fit for one job or another based on attributes of their personality or attributes of, of their behavior that were measurable and, and that we can make decisions. So what we developed was a set of core assessments that measure behavioral aptitudes, such as the effort or emotional style that somebody, to, somebody brings to a job, skills such as numerical reasoning and communication, which is of course key to our day-to-day our -day life. And we didn't just make these up out of thin air, all of the assessments that Pymetrics built as part of our approach to data collection and data ingestion in this analytics life cycle are drawn from the cognitive neuroscience literature. So we, we, we looked through a large literature of papers and developed a series of assessments based on this literature that we could then gamify and adapt into the hiring landscape. And to do this, we need to take these assessments, for, which were originally used in the lab context, and convert them into data that we can use in an algorithm to predict hiring performance. And we do this with a variety of ML solutions. The key is that as we build out this, these solutions and as we build out our machine learning platform, we have to have a tool that is both predictive of success, and we do that in a particular way, but also fair, because it's really important in the hiring landscape that we focus on ensuring that everybody has equal access to opportunity in the job context. And so this is the core machine learning part of what we do. I'd be happy to talk about this more, but probably not. don't have time in this talk. What I wanna identify though is we have to do two things at once. We have to make predictions and those predictions have to be fair. And the last thing is it's not just prediction that we have to focus on, you know, making sure that we, we maximize the value of the people that, that we recommend to be hired. And it's not just fairness. We also have another layer. We have to add an explainability component. So when you're making decisions about people's lives, as we do in the hiring space, it's really important that those decisions feel like they are accessible to someone. It's not just a black box. It's not just an arbitrary decision. And both for the candidate applying to a job, they need to understand why we're making the decision we're making. And for the recruiter assessing a candidate, they need to understand where the decision is coming from. And these seem like features of a machine learning solution, but they're actually the key features of business value as we go through our, our kind of client life cycle. And these three metrics of prediction and fairness and explainability, we can then quantify in various ways, which we do for all of our clients. And so we'll quantify things like the efficiency, 
that we bring to a client's hiring life cycle. If they need to hire 1,000 or 10,000 people, how much time can a, can a solution like Pymetrics save? We can quantify things like diversity. How much diversity do we bring into the company that can help offset some of the historical marginalization of underrepresented groups? And we can also quantify things like the performance of people on the job, how effective they are, and um, what the kind of candidate and client experiences over time. And as we have gone through our, our career at Pymetrics, uh, really, over the last, last five or six years, we've developed a, a whole suite of metrics that we measure for every client. And so these are kind of the three chunks of the analytics-driven lifecycle that I talked about. We have a proprietary and scalable and really valuable um, data set that we use to drive our hiring decisions. We have a core of machine learning algorithms that we use to make predictions based off of those and recommend who should be hired for a particular job. And lastly, we have uh, really well-validated ways, validated ways of demonstrating business value. So that's kind of the, the nutshell of what Pymetrics does. But, and I wanna bridge out from there to give kind of three short lessons from this journey that we've learned so far. And the first lesson is that in addition to simply providing value, the fairness of the platform as a whole across many clients is a performance criterion for any analytics driven company. And this is gonna be true for everybody working in the analytics or AI space going forward. And if it hasn't hit your industry yet, it will hit your industry soon. But a really important thing for us is that unlike many of the analytics driven companies you see today, Pymetrics actually started out with regulations uh, surrounding the decisions that we were we were recommending. So historically, uh, the Equal Opportunity Equal Employment Opportunity Commission has developed standards for hiring assessments that say that a hiring assessment can only be deployed if it meets certain fairness criteria. So if it, for instance, uh, a hiring solution is recommending that a certain fraction of white men like me get hired then it must also recommend for other demographics that they also be hired at approximately the same rate within about an 80% margin. And many of the tests that have been used historically, such as cognitive testing, which is used broadly across a variety of industries in the hiring context, or even human resume reviews actually fail this test. So cognitive testing has been reported in the literature to pass, for instance, about 40% uh, as many black men as white men, which is just unacceptable in the hiring landscape and in you know, the shape of the society we'd like to live in together. And one of the things we've done is, at Pymetrics is assess our performance across many clients over the years uh, and shown that we pass the, this bar with flying colors. And this is really important because it validates that Pymetrics is not just making recommendations that we think are predictive, but also that we think are fair and are kind of decreasing some of the disparities in the world. And so this is really important. Uh, in many of the AI deployments these days, and uh, as I said, is, is coming to your industry soon. The second thing, though, is that it's not enough for a company like Pymetrics to simply report its internal numbers. You know, there are, are, there's a lot of missing trust in this field, and, and with good reason. So one of the approaches Pymetrics has taken is to improve the transparency of its process through external audits. And this really bridges the gap between what Pymetrics and companies like Pymetrics say that they do, what regulators enforce by law that Pymetrics must do, and ensure that that gap is filled in a way that the public has access to. The public understands how a company like Pymetrics is meeting its regulatory obligations. And so as an example, what we've done is we've actually called in external auditors. Uh, so we had an excellent external audit by a group led by Krista Wilson at Northeastern University. And with uh, essentially no restrictions to the audit or what they could publish and full access to the audit team within, uh, for all of the data within Pymetrics, they were able to basically validate that Pymetrics assessments are correct, that we in fact do uh, focus on the fairness metrics we say we do, that we don't discriminate, uh, and that it's incredibly difficult for any adverse party, for instance a client, uh, to work around many of the safeguards we have. And the important thing about this kind of audit is that it's transparent and that it is uh, one of the ways in which we can build trust to deploy analytics-driven solutions in really complicated societal contexts such as health. 
So this transparency, I think, is really, really key to the AI lifecycle. And to come back to, to this, this description, you know, I kind of talked about Pymetric's approach to data collection, where we use our specific kind of cognitive uh, assessments. Our approach to machine learning, where we have our, our particular special sauce in the, as the core analytics engine of Pymetrics, and the way we quantify business value. One really important thing to note, though, is that really only step two here, the machine learning, can really be meaningfully commoditized. And so as the analytics landscape evolves throughout you know, the broader business context, the real value comes from developing new data sets and new ways to demonstrate business value to clients. But there is a fourth step that is coming and is really, you know, we've learned a lot from at Pymetrics by starting in the regulatory context, which is the most important step in the analytics lifecycle is integration into society. And this is not just a legal framework, you know, for instance, about government regulations, but also about broader metrics to build trust uh, as we deploy tools like these. Uh, and this phase, honestly, is just beginning and I think is uh, going to be one of the most interesting and fruitful ways uh, in which folks can engage in this. So, and with that, I'll uh, give my thanks and big thanks to the organizers of this, con uh, of this conference. It's been a pleasure to be here uh, and looking forward to hearing more. Thanks very much.